The Shiraki Valley in the South Caucasus country of Georgia is the nation's food bowl, important in the production of wheat and sunflower. But it is a region under pressure from land degradation and falling crop yields which threaten local livelihoods and the nation's food security. The burning of crop residues following harvest is common in agricultural practices around the world and the Shiraki Valley is no exception. Burning is a quick and cheap method of clearing weeds and residues for the next planting cycle. And when farmers' profit margins are tight, the least cost option is often taken. In the hot summer of 2015, wildfires originating from residue burns started by farmers got out of control. The fires burned through 34,000 hectares of farmland, causing damage to property and destroying 55 kilometers of hedgerows. These hedgerows act as windbreaks, which protect crops from damage and soil erosion. Many of these windbreaks had only just been replanted after many years of being cut for fuel wood. Other impacts, such as damage to the soil caused by regular burning, are less visible. If fields are not burned, residues can be recycled back into the soil, where they can decompose, release nutrients, and build up organic matter and soil carbon. The resulting changes in soil structure improve the capacity of soils to retain water, an ecosystem service which is particularly important during the hot, dry summers. Above the surface, residues provide ground cover which slows evaporation and reduces erosion. When fields are burned, all of these benefits are lost. This practice is a strong driver of soil degradation. The loss of the windbreaks affects regional biodiversity, for example, destroying habitats for birds of prey that protect fields against rodent infestations and burning releases significant amounts of carbon into the atmosphere, both from the soil and plant material. Many farmers, however, are not aware of the long-term negative impacts of burning, and the government is hesitant to place extra costs on these farmers. To better understand this issue, the Georgian Ministry of Environment commissioned a study to find out if there was an economic case for banning the use of fire. The project was funded by the German Corporation for International Development, known as GIZ, and undertaken by the Economics of Land Degradation Initiative and environmental consultants Altus Impact. As part of the study, 300 farmers were surveyed on their attitudes towards change, and soil samples were taken from nine study sites and tested to simulate burning in the fields. The project included workshops in the capital Tbilisi, and in the Shiraki Valley area. At the workshops, the results of the field studies and laboratory experiments were reported back and ideas and concerns were raised by stakeholders, which included policymakers, farmers, and experts in the fields of agronomy, ecology, and economics. But not all farmers are burning their fields. Some are already changing their behavior. <laughs> The project aimed to value changes in the provision of ecosystem goods and services, such as climate regulation and soil productivity, that would result from a ban on residue burning, and compare this to any additional costs associated with not burning. Ecosystem goods and services are the dividends of a stock of what's called natural capital, which includes the Earth's geology, air, soil, water and living organisms. And for the farmers of the Shiraki Valley, where soil fertility is literally going up in smoke, protecting this natural capital is vital. The study looked at a number of options and weighed up the benefits and costs in monetary terms of banning burning. The benefits of restricting fire include a boost of crop yields, 
the potential sale of straw when it is collected rather than burned, the protection of the remaining windbreaks from agricultural fires, and reduced greenhouse gas emissions. The survey also revealed that farmers had a preference for, and would gain welfare benefit from, a comprehensive government-enforced ban on burning to ensure all farmers, particularly their neighbours, followed the same rules. The cost side of the ledger included additional costs to farmers of hiring equipment to either integrate residues into the soil or to collect straw to sell, and the costs to the Georgian government of implementing and enforcing a ban on residue burning. The benefits and costs were then aggregated and projected 10 years into the future, the time frame of most interest to the farmers, with a 4% discount rate applied. Using this cost-benefit framework, the study looked at a number of scenarios. Firstly, as the baseline, a business-as-usual scenario was defined. In the alternative scenario, it is assumed crop residue burning is banned. Farmers' options are to either collect and bale the straw and sell to the livestock sector, or sell as an input into higher value uses, such as fuel pellet processing. All farmers can shred residues during harvesting and integrate them into the soil. In reality, it is likely farmers would adopt a mixture of these two strategies. The results of the study showed there are significant benefits to banning the burning of residues. If residues were recycled into the soil instead, crop yields would increase by between 11 and 23 percent, depending on the frequency of any residual burning. This represents an additional yearly income in present values and based on today's straw, rent and machinery prices of between 33 and 70 US dollars per hectare, or 77 and 163 Georgian lari. The economic benefit of legally enforcing a ban, ensuring all farmers stop burning, is also significant, worth approximately 50 US dollars, or 120 Georgian lari, each year to the average Shiraki Valley farmer who has three hectares of land. This implies that individually farmers have a preference for using collective action through enforcement rather than voluntary bans on burning, which better ensure them against fires originating from elsewhere. Finally, for the average farmer, the protection of remaining windbreaks would ensure six US dollars per year is avoided in welfare losses. Aggregating the costs and benefits revealed in the Shiraki Valley study showed there would be significant benefits to Georgia's economy over the 10-year period. Assuming farmers adopted a mixed strategy of recycling crop residues and selling straw bales, the total net value, in present values, over 10 years is in the order of 7.5 million US dollars, or 17.3 million Georgian lari. Economic benefits also derive from the protection of windbreaks, which prevent wind erosion, from farmer well-being, from reductions in rope burning, and from reduced carbon emissions. And there is only a relatively small cost to the Georgian economy from implementing and enforcing the ban on burning. Through a policy of banning burning, the study showed that for the average farmer in the Shiraki Valley, over a 10-year period, there would be a benefit to cost ratio, that is the returns on every dollar invested, of three. This represents a benefit of around 2,500 US dollars. Including the costs of implementing and enforcing the ban and adding the benefits of slashing emissions by the equivalent of 49,000 tonnes, the benefit to cost ratio to the global community is 3.6. We have found that uh, there are significant benefits to be um, enjoyed both at the society level and the farmer level. These include protecting remaining windbreaks from not being destroyed further. All the biological benefits of retaining straw in the soil, thereby helping the soil regenerate its fertility and store more water. So at the farm level there's benefits, at the societal level there are benefits also linked to reduced carbon emissions in the global atmosphere. So it can both be economically interesting from a business case, from a farmer perspective and from societal perspective to ban crop residue burning. In addition to banning burning, the study also points to more benefits if a broader package of improved farming practices, such as integrated pest management, no-till farming and regular crop rotations is put in place. If the government of Georgia 
and the farmers of the Shiraki Valley can agree to take collective action to stop burning crop residues, one of the planet's most valuable natural capital stores, its fertile soils, can be protected in perpetuity to provide food and support livelihoods indefinitely.